October is a month to use our imaginations and creativity for the macabre. So, I only found it to be suiting that my first video of the month would be, well, a little unsettling. As children, we are told there are no such things as monsters or ghosts lurking in our closets or under our beds. But what if things happen to sway our decisions on the matter? These are three terrifying paranormal stories. The Unfound Creature It was a cool summer night, so we had all the windows open in the house. I remember it being so hot all summer, and it was nice that the heat had subsided a bit as summer was coming to an end. I was sitting in my living room flipping through channels. I had never really stayed up to watch TV at night, especially not as late as it was. My living room had always given off this uneasy feeling, and no one I lived with ever wanted to be down there at night, especially not alone. But for tonight for some reason, I found myself sitting alone in the room thinking nothing would happen. I was home alone, which was strange considering I lived with a ton of people, so someone was always home. I was going back and forth between watching TV and scrolling through Facebook on my phone when I heard a strange growling noise. It was unlike anything I've ever heard before. It sounded like a demonic animal that had been somewhere outside. I was so afraid to get up and look out the window like the chicken shit that I am, so I ignored it and went back to my phone. It must have been an animal or something, I thought in my head, nothing to be worried about. About 15 minutes or so went by and the growling happened again, only this time it was louder and sounded closer as well. I walked over to the window to see what it had been happening outside, but I couldn't see anything, so I just sat back down and went back to what I was doing. Just as I sat down, the growling was back, but this time, it happened three times, getting louder each time. After that, I saw a huge dark figure run across my front yard. I grabbed my phone as fast as I could, ready to call my boyfriend, but it was dead. How could it be dead? It was just at 63%. It was impossible. I looked out the window again, and nothing was there. It must be some damn kids fooling around outside. But still, I went to all the windows, shut them, locked them, and put the blinds down. I went to shut everything down, but before I could start turning everything off, the power went out. Just my luck. I scrambled around for a flashlight, but the batteries in it were dead. Then, the lights started flickering on and off, and all the blinds in my house shot up. The growling started again, and... This time, it was not stopping. I could see this big, ugly creature outside the window looking in at me. I was absolutely terrified. What the fuck was it? It looked like something absolutely unreal. I ran up to my room, shut my door, and locked it. The lights came back on and everything seemed to be at ease. I looked out the window one last time and the creature was gone. But I noticed something on my arms. I was all scratched up. Some of the scratches were even bleeding. I never even felt anything scratch me. Was it the thing that was in my house when the lights went out? What did it want from me? Just then, my mom pulled in the driveway and I ran downstairs to explain to her what happened. But as soon as I went to show her the scratches on my arms, they were magically gone. How was this happening? I told her about the creature, but she just laughed at me. It had been raining that night, so I figured there had to be footprints out on the lawn, so my mom picked up the flashlight and turned it on, but the batteries were just dead. We went looking for something, anything, that this beast could have left behind, but there was nothing. My mom suggested that I go get some rest. It must have been the show I was watching on TV that night, but... I knew what I saw. I know I didn't imagine it. I was never caught dead in the living room by myself again. I never did find out what that creature was, but I will never forget what it did to me. The reason why I hate dolls so much. 
I was about six years old when my sister was born. I spent a lot of time looking after my sister while my mom went to work or out for the evening when she couldn't get a babysitter. My sister used to get a lot of hand-me-down toys, you know, like little girls usually do. I'm talking little puppets to go on her shelf, stuffed teddies, dolls, etc, etc, you know, the usual stuff and the one of the things she got was a giant raggedy Ann doll that was as big as my sister. I was 8 years old by the time my sister had moved into the room opposite of me because I could keep an eye on her while my mom wasn't around. I don't really remember the time or the date but I do know it was a school day and I remember the whole day. I didn't feel well like all kids do sometimes and mom called in sick for me, left me some paracetamol and left for work. A few hours went by and I was woken up by my sister crying. I went in and she calmed down and I went back to sleep. Around 10 minutes go by and I hear my sister crying again. I roll over and take off the covers when in the door was my sister crying with her giant Raggedy Ann doll in front of her. I get up and ask her what's the matter and she asks if she can stay in my room. I have to turn her down because I'm sick but I tell her she is more than welcome to sleep on the floor if she brings in her covers and pillows and roll back over onto my pillows. An hour goes by when I hear my sister playing with my toys. Annoying, I roll over to ask her to keep it down but she isn't in my room. My toys have been played with and scattered around but my sister isn't there. I got out of bed and made my way to her room again but as I entered she started crying again. I shrugged and started to walk over when I hear heavy breathing. It was like her crying volume was turned down in my head so I could hear the breathing. I turned around but alas, nothing was there and my sister stopped crying. I went to the front room to watch some TV for a bit but my headache was too much for me to continue so. After about an hour, I went back to my room. When I entered my room, my toys had been put away. Freaked out, I ran into my bed and under the covers and closed my eyes. I counted to ten and pulled the covers down a bit so I could see. In my doorway was the doll, again, but my sister was nowhere in sight. I hid under the covers again and counted to ten. As I peeked under the covers again, the doll was on my playing mat. I quickly pulled the covers over and closed my eyes, saying that it was just a dream. A few minutes went by and I started to calm down when I heard the heavy breathing again. I didn't want to look, I really didn't, but curiosity got the best of me and I wanted to see what it was, after all, none of this could be real. As I slowly peeked from under the covers, the doll was standing there. It couldn't see me, but I could see it. I pulled the covers over and began to scream. What else could I do? A few seconds later, I heard my sister asking me if I was okay. I pulled the covers back and sat up. I looked to the side and there was the doll and a heap on the floor next to my bed. I asked my sister to pick up her doll, take it with her, and that I would put her back to bed. After putting her to bed, I stared the doll down as if I sh it should respond to me. With the doll doing nothing, I went to the kitchen to grab some water when I heard a crash from my sister's room. I put the drink down and proceeded to go down to the hall when the doll was sat in my sister's doorway. I couldn't peel my body away as the doll's head began to turn towards me and face me. In a fit of hysteria, I put my hand on the wall and closed my eyes and ran to the toilet which in between mine and the, my sister's room and slammed the door. After a few minutes of collecting myself and telling myself none of it was real, I opened the door ready to face my fear yet the doll wasn't there. I thought at this case I was going insane when I put my feet on the carpet. The floor felt like I was walking on thumbtacks and the only thing I could do was walk to the phone and call my mom to come back. As I struggled to walk, I could hear the heavy breathing again but I couldn't run because it hurt to walk. 
Every step I took, the breathing got louder and the hallway lengthened like it was never going to end. It got to the point where it was so loud, it was like someone breathing deeply in your ear. I closed my eyes and opened them to find that I was standing over the phone. I cowered in the corner and I searched the phone book for mom's number when I looked down the hall. The doll was stood up and was slowly dragging its stuffed legs along the floor like it was trying to walk. I dialed the number as quick as I could, constantly looking at the doll. It was getting up and getting closer and closer when my mom finally picked up. All I did was scream and cry in the corner until mom came through the door. It was almost as if as soon as she put the phone down, she arrived. I told my mom what happened and she said she didn't believe me like all adults would. Two days later, my sister threw the doll out. Only the doll and nothing else. I recently asked my sister if she would remember any of this and of course, she can. What she does remember is me screaming at one point, sleeping on my floor while I breathed heavy and deeply, and standing beside her watching over her. But I never stood over her. A short story of the game of hide and seek when I was a kid in Montenegro. When my family moved from Basia to Montenegro, I had trouble adjusting to the new life. I was never very social and it really took me a while to start making friends. Our house is built on a big hill and is pretty populated so there was a lot of potential friends around. After about a year of living there, I finally started interacting with other kids. I was about 9 at the time and all I used to do before that was go to school and play video games. Once I made a few friends, I began spending more time outside. Our activities would range from all kinds of sports to our favorite game, hide and seek. We'd often play hide and seek on the main road. That area was poorly lit so it was perfect for our needs. One particular night, my best friend at the time, Vesco, suggested that we improve our traditional game of hide and seek. He proposed that we go to the Stravina cave that was on top of the hill and play inside it. Now, Stravina was always off limits for us kids. Elders would always tell us that the place was haunted and strange things would happen there. My father told me that a homeless man once went there to spend a night and that locals found him outside the cave in the morning. Trouble was, he had aged about 30 years overnight. They said it happened because of the shock from all the horrible things he saw in the cave. The man never spoke about what he saw that night. Rumor was also that during the Turkish invasion of the 15th century, a group of kids from that area organized some sort of resistance army. They fought the Turkish well, in fact, so well that the Turkish emperor offered significant reward for their heads. Kids were finally caught hiding in the Stravina cave, where they were all beheaded. Look, I loved good horror as a kid, but even then I knew when to call bullshit. Us kids assumed that grown-ups didn't want us to go to the cave because there was a lot of snakes in the area, and hey, I fucking hated snakes, and still do, so I never felt compelled to go. But that night, Vesco persuaded most of us kids to go up to the Stravina, and I agreed. The entrance to the cave seemed very non-threatening. It was just a large hole and a huge piece of stone, nothing more. The worst thing you'd find in there could be an animal that's looking for shelter. We had no flashlights or lighters, so we decided to slightly change the rules of the game. One person would count to ten, and then start looking for the others. When they'd find someone, they'd have to guess who they found in order to switch. I'm not sure if they set me up because I was somewhat of a new kid from the block, but Rock, paper, scissors decided that I would be seeking first. They made a rule that I had to go to the deep end of the cave to do the count before I could start searching. Nobody really knew how deep the cave was. While non-threatening from the outside, the cave seemed much more malicious from the inside. Mainly because it was pitch black and wet. Water was dripping everywhere and the place was so damn slippery. I was very reluctant to go in, but... I didn't want to look like a wuss in front of my new friends, so I stepped in and started walking further in. The place wasn't actually that bad. I mean, I couldn't see shit, but there were no ghosts or zombies, so I was good. 
When I was far enough, I yelled that I was starting to count. The rule while counting was that I'd have to spin 10 times so I'd get disoriented. And boy, did I get lost. When I reached 10, I had no idea which direction I came from. I was far enough from the entrance that no moonlight could reach me. Once again, trying not to act cowardly, I chose the direction and started walking. At least 10 minutes must have passed and I couldn't find anyone. There wasn't even a sound in that place, other than the damn water dripping. I started getting worried. Perhaps this wasn't such a good idea. Five more minutes went by and I was starting to panic. I was lost. I wanted to run, but I couldn't see shit, so I just walked nervously. Vesco? Alright, I give up. I tried saying, but nobody answered. Then I heard footsteps, finally. I followed the sound until I felt that I was right in front of the person. I sprang my arms and touched them. Yes. Marina! I yelled. Marina was one of the neighbor girls I had a crush on, and the silk dress I was touching in the dark felt like the one she was wearing. I got no response though. Really? Not Marina? I asked. The rule is, if I guessed wrong, I continue seeking for the next person. Alright, but you guys are cheating. I sighed as I moved on. I walked for another five or so minutes, this time less scared because I knew the other kids were down here with me. Then I heard heavy breathing from behind me. The person was so close, I could feel their breath on my neck. I got scared for a second, but then I laughed. Vesco, you asshole, I said as I turned around. You can't scare me. I grabbed the kid's shirt. It was strange because his shirt felt ripped in a few places, something I didn't notice on Vesco before. No response. Come on, for real? I asked as I let him go. He was still breathing very heavily. Okay, but next time I get you, you're seeking. I kept walking. As I searched through the lightless cave, I wondered how these kids got to be so good at hiding. They must have been here a million times before, I thought as I stepped in the direction I assumed was leading to the entrance of the cave. I hoped that the moonlight would aid me in my search. Then I bumped into someone. The person was very cold. And my immediate thought was, they got wet in the cave. Hmm, who is this? Philip? I asked as I ran my hands over the cold skin. No response. Come on guys, I got Philip. Can't play me anymore. Nothing. I put my hands on Philip's face. It felt equally cold. I tried feeling and finding something that would undeniably prove it was him, but I couldn't. It felt strange to be touching this cold person in a pitch black cave. The person also appeared to be smiling. You know what? Screw this man, I says as I push Philip away. I'm out of here. I turned around and started walking. I hoped I was going the right way. After about five minutes, I saw a weak ray of light that I got happy I could see. Screw these kids, I got my video games anyway. I walked towards the opening, and as I was stepping out, I tripped on a rock. A burst of laughter broke the silence I was, I was in for the past 30 minutes or so. I looked up and saw them. All of my friends. Vesco, Marina, Philip, Dragon, Dusko, and Darko. They all stood some 20 yards from the cave, looking at me laughing. I was still on the ground, wet from the cave's moisture, dirty, and now with a bleeding knee. How the hell? I asked as I got up. How'd all of you beat me out? They started laughing again. Seriously, is there a shortcut out? I asked as I tried wiping the blood off my knee with a leaf. They laughed some more, and then Vasco walked over to me. Sorry, man. It had to be done. What had to be done? I looked up. We were just messing with you. We, we never go in that place. I laugh. You never stop playing, huh? I said, getting ready to leave. No, we do this to every new kid on the street. You're one of the few who actually went in. You're cool, dude. The others walked over and gave me the looks of approval. 
So you're telling me that none of you went in with me? I'd never step in that place, said Marina with a shaking gesture as if she were too scared of the cave. Come on, guys. I found three of you in there and you cheated. They all got serious for a second and then they started laughing. Now you're messing with us, laughed Philip and he started to walk away. The others followed him. Hold on, guys, really, I said, getting more worried. Be serious now. Did you come in there with me or not? No way, dude, said Vesco seriously as he joined the leaving group. I felt goosebumps come like a wave over my body. They weren't joking. Who was in there? Was I imagining? Guys, hold on a second, I asked them. I, I swear I saw someone down there. Come on, man, let's go home. Enough playing for the night. You did well, said Dusko. Just for a second, can you wait for me here one minute? I asked. I was pretty terrified, but I wanted to prove that they were messing with me. Who else would happen to be in the cave? Come on. Seriously? Asked Dusko. Yeah, just, just one minute. Some of them sighed, but they all stopped. I had a minute. I slowly walked inside. I had a bit of moonlight hitting my back so I could see the surroundings. There was nothing there. I looked back and saw all six of my friends waiting outside. I made a few steps enough to get away from the light. I immediately regretted it. I stopped. Nothing was happening. There was no sound. Not even the water. Where'd all the water go? It felt strange. It felt like many individuals were there. I just couldn't see them. I stood there. Hello? I asked quietly, but even that sounded too loud. Nothing. Anyone in there? I asked as I decided that it'd be my last question before getting the hell out of there. And just as I was about to turn around and leave, someone grabbed my arm. The hand that did it was ice cold and wet. They squeezed my arm so hard I felt instant pain. I was so paralyzed I couldn't say a word and I couldn't move. Then in the most terrifying, fastest whisper he said, my defense mechanism kicked in and instantly I ripped myself away from the thing and ran like hell I sprinted outside the cave where my friends all waited all six of them they stared at me I told them what happened but all they did was cause them to laugh when I got home it took me a good two hours to get back to normal I was shaking the whole time I went to sleep promising I'd never hang out with those kids again in the morning when I woke up, I had a bruise on my arm. It perfectly resembled a hand. I never did go back to Stravina Cave.